Welcome. My name is Pastor Steve Edmiston. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul Lutheran Church near Genera, Ohio. It is good for us to continue to be together as much as we can in this time when we're asked to stay distant from one another for the sake of the vulnerable. It is good for us to come together as we continue our celebration of Easter, which isn't a day, which isn't a week, which is a week of weeks. And today we celebrate the fourth Sunday in our season of Easter, which is sometimes called Good Shepherd Sunday for the readings that we will be hearing from Scripture today. But I'm glad that you're with us. I hope that you're feeling well. And let us now begin our worship with the prayer of the day. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, we will begin with a reading from the book of Psalms. <clears throat> you may have already guessed, we will be reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends our reading from the Psalms. Our Gospel reading today comes to us from the Gospel according to St. John, in the 10th chapter, where Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to imagine a place. Close your eyes if you have to, and imagine a place of rest and peace. A place to, to energize and to collect yourself. Imagine that place, what it looks like, what it has around you, how you feel when you are there. Got it? Now think about the fact that according to Jesus, our lives are that place. Or at least our lives can be that place of rest and peace, of energy and comfort. See, that's what Jesus 
is beginning to describe in the gospel this morning. This is what Jesus is talking about. As he is telling those who listen that he is the shepherd and the gatekeeper and the gate for us to enter into the world around us and live the love of God. See, Jesus began this discourse while he was in the temple. In John's Gospel, this is after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. This is after Jesus has given sight to the blind man. And so as his disciples are following him, and for the, the benefit of others who were there, Jesus begins to teach. And his first statement is that anyone who comes into the sheepfold by any way but the gate is a thief, abandoned, up to no good. See, Jesus is using the metaphor, the figure of speech of a sheepfold, a gate, of a shepherd, and all of this in order to give us an image to cling to and to borrow the image of shepherd that comes to us from the Old Testament Especially Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I am the gate for the sheep. The one who comes by the gate is the shepherd calling his sheep, leading them out to find life. These images are given to us so that they can stand as reassurance for us. We are not. Alone. Jesus is with us as an example of how we are to live. He is with us as our Redeemer and as our friend. This is one of the ways that Jesus lives as God on earth, and this is one of the ways that God is reflected in the life and the teaching of Jesus. Jesus is our shepherd. The one who protects us, comforts us, provides for our needs. In a commentary I was reading this week on Psalm 23, it says that, that sheep will not lie down, whether it's in green pastures or anywhere else. They will not lie down, they will not be calm unless four needs are met. They need to be free from fear. They need to be free from friction with others. They need to be free from pests. And they need to be free from hunger. And without that, they won't be calm. They're just not that way. In today's gospel, Jesus is saying that he is the gate to the sheepfold. He's saying that he is the shepherd. He is the gatekeeper. He's the one who provides these needs so that we can find that comfort and peace, so that we can be energized and then sent out into the world in love. You see, Jesus frees us from fear. See, the devil, the world, and our sinful selves try very, very hard to make us afraid. We are every day assaulted by headlines and news stories created to cause fear. We are tempted to worry and create fears that work only on us. But mostly, we are encouraged to fear death. And here, Jesus, the risen Christ, steps in with the truth that death is not <clears throat> the end, that we are loved and forgiven, that we have another chance, and that we are called to give neighbors and others another chance. See, Jesus' resurrection stands against our fear. Jesus' teaching and love Stand against our fear. Jesus.
frees us from fear. But Jesus also frees us from friction. <clears throat> Jesus showed us the depth of God's love when we were forgiven. Even though we were enemies with Jesus, enemies with God at the time. Jesus then teaches us that bringing the kingdom of God nearby includes us loving our enemy. Now that can seem impossible. That can be terrifically difficult. But Jesus stands by our side with the strength and the courage to do just that, to love our enemies, to love even people we don't like, because Jesus frees us from friction. Jesus also frees us from pests. Now for sheep, that's, you know, flies and other bugs. And for us, it can be people who irritate us or even situations that irritate us. Jesus offers God's peace. And it's a peace that surpasses understanding. So if you are irritated, we need to get in touch with Jesus because Jesus frees us from those pests and Jesus frees us from hunger. Both that hunger and thirst for righteousness and the hunger we have for living bread. Jesus gave his life so that his promise in Holy Communion stands true. That that bread is his body for our life and forgiveness. Jesus and his teaching also helps us as we hunger after what it is that we are to do to live God's dream. Hunger does come back. But Jesus promised to be with us always. And so no matter what, Jesus frees us from hunger. So if Jesus is our shepherd, freeing us from all of these things, then I want to be a sheep. For years, I didn't like the metaphor of us being sheep. I didn't like the comparison because my neighbor growing up, Mr. Olson, had sheep. And then watching those sheep, I found them to be smelly and not very bright. Now, when Jesus is saying that he's the shepherd and we're the sheep, he's not calling us smelly or stupid. Jesus wants us to follow. And as humans, we follow like sheep follow. We follow our fears all too often. We follow our own selfish ideas. Some, most of the time, we're following someone else. But Jesus' claim today is that he is the one that we can follow. That he is the one who brings us to that place of peace, that place of rest, that place that inspires us to go and build God's kingdom. You see, Jesus stands as our invitation to the sheepfold, to the place beneath God's sheltering wing that gives us comfort, rest, energy and peace. But Jesus also tells us that is, if there is someone who comes by another way, someone who comes telling us that there are things that we must do, or that there are things that we must know, or that there are ways that we must behave, or there are things that we must believe, if they come in with anything like that, with anything but the love of God, with the love for our neighbor, even with the love for ourselves, then those who come in that way are thieves and bandits. They're up to no good. See, Jesus invites us to this sheepfold so that we can find rest and rejuvenation. So that we can find all that we need 
so that we can follow Jesus into the world and care for our neighbors and love those around us. No one stays in the sheepfold forever. We are called to come to find rest and peace and then go. Today we celebrate Jesus as our shepherd. Today we celebrate the truth that Jesus calls us. He calls us to follow him. And then Jesus leads us out into the world. Jesus calls us, he guides us, he protects us, comforts us, and stands beside us as we live our lives in ways that invite others to find their hope and peace in the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. As we continue to celebrate Easter, to celebrate the truth that Jesus is risen, he is risen indeed, hallelujah, as we celebrate that, May we find time to rest and re-energize. <clears throat> but also, may we discover new ways to follow Jesus into the world and share the love. Now these days, that can be difficult. But it is never impossible to share that love. For Jesus is with us. And we are loved. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in a time of prayer. We gather to meet our risen Lord and we lift up our prayers for the church, for the world, and for all who need God's love. Risen Christ, as we come to see you, May your resurrection glory fill us with light and life so that we might carry your good news of love and forgiveness everywhere we go. Heal those who are sick. May they regain their strength and health. Heal us from our fear which prevents us from working together and hampers neighbors from helping others. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability. Come to us, gather here, and help us always find new and appropriate ways to celebrate, live, and share your resurrection and your life. We remember before you, O oh Lord, our colleagues in ministry and all that they do to spread your good news. Blessed be with Songo Bele Lutheran and her subparish at Matanga. Be with the Navajo Lutheran Mission, with St. John, Good Hope, Mission Possible, and all the congregations of the Northwestern Ohio Synod. Grant us all the inspiration to bring your dream to life. Risen Lord, many people call on you in need, and you hear our prayers always. We pray that you would bless all who struggle with pain, disease, troubles, and trials. We ask you to bless these we know who need your presence. We pray for Ted, Lee, for the family and friends of Greg Demicus, for Penny, Brooke, Julie, Peyton, Rick, Gloria, for Nick, Justin, Matt, Logan, Colin, Ben, and Kyle. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people or only a few, stay with us, O Lord, as we endure, persist, and prepare. In place of our anxiety, give us your peace. Blessed risen Lord Christ, our lives are filled with your love, with your brightness, grace, and favor. Make us instruments of your peace and love, and give us hope that your dream for creation will be our heart's desire. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Life-giving God, you have touched us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through the peace you give, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so we come to another time when we have gathered together as we may. I want to make sure I say thank you to Noah for once again being here to help us record this. I hope that all of you are staying well. I hope that there will be a time when we can come back together and be in worship together. Please remember your sisters and brothers in your prayers. Please remember St. Paul in your generosity. Stay warm, stay safe, stay dry, be healthy. And let us remember that we are called to go with Christ into the world to celebrate, live, and share. Till another time.